Hey guys, welcome back to Delicious Life. Um, today is not uh, your usual video. Today, Manny's gonna be taking over with some money saving tips um, that will help you guys out. Here, he's, here he is to explain more, and I'll see you guys later. All right. Hi everybody. So today what we're gonna do, this is Delicious Suggestion. Um, I wouldn't call it money saving tips necessarily, but what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go through, this is gonna be a multi-part series. Right now I think it's gonna be four parts, but maybe a fifth will come later. If you guys leave some comments or some questions, maybe we have to add a fifth part, but what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go over a few things, and I'm not saying, I don't wanna, I'm not gonna say that these things may work for you, they may not work for you, so look into None of that. What I'm going to give you guys are concrete, solid suggestions that regardless of your situation, if you follow what I say, all the steps, all the things that I'm going to touch on, there's absolutely no reason they're not going to work for you. It doesn't matter who you are and what situation. Now, the numbers are going to be a little bit different. Let's say, um, we'll try to keep numbers out of it because everybody's numbers are going to be different. My numbers, your numbers, doesn't matter. But proportionately, relative to your situation, it should all be just the same. So, what are my qualifications to speak about this? Absolutely none, other than the fact that I'm 29 and I started, um, I really started this plan of mine that I had when I was about 20 or 21. Um, <clears throat> I knew that I wanted to move to Miami. so. Some years down the line after that, I started, I started my career um, when I was 21. My girlfriend, Delisha, obviously, moved in with me um, a couple years after that. And here we are, um, eight years later, and we're moving to Miami. So, let's go over this, and um, this is just my life experience. That's all I'm going to be basing it off of. But... I like to think things through, um, and really, there's no reason that why they, these principles wouldn't work for you. So if you're in your early 20s, if you're in your late 20s, if you're in your 30s, whatever the case may be, it's never too soon to start. Um, if you have financial difficulties right now, or if you say, hey, I have a long-term goal, whatever the case may be, Watch these. Watch this. Ser watch this series, <laughs> and um, I think you'll be good to go. So, today we're going to do part one. And what's part one about? Being honest. This is the most, most, most important. So, if you don't watch anything else, which I hope that you do, watch this one and think this through. And let me say before I even begin, if you have any questions or any comments, leave them in the comment section. We'll, I'll address them, either in, I'll respond in the comments or we'll make another video if it's, if it's a more detailed question um, because it'll benefit everybody, I think. Now, you know, you don't need to ask questions like, oh, what do you think about using a CD instead of a money market? What do you think? No, 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 I'm not gonna talk about things like that. We're not gonna get to that specific, that's irrelevant. This is gonna be a lot more basic, a lot more broad, um, but you'll see as we go along. So, number one, part one is being honest. Part of the problem that I think people have when they try to deal with financial situations, their own personal finances, is that they think, okay, well, I'm going to do this much, or, oh yeah, I can do it like this, I can put this much money away, or, oh sure, it doesn't matter, I'll, you know, at the end of the month after doing this, whatever the case may be. I, I can't even think of good examples, but you, you, you know what I'm trying to say. People do these, give themselves these unrealistic expectations and things usually collapse. Now this also happens with, and I'm gonna make my point by giving examples. I think that's the best way to illustrate points. So what am I trying to say? For example, let's think about uh, two good examples, dieting or exercising. People say, oh, I'm gonna lose 50 pounds by the summer, I'm gonna be in great shape. How many men, how many women have you heard say that, right? So they sign up for the gym, they start going crazy, they do all these things, they wear themselves out. 
they go full, they go full on, and they give up. Diets. Uh, oh yeah, I'm gonna lose 50 pounds, I'm gonna start eating better, I'm gonna do an all-liquid diet. Well, great, so they start doing it a couple weeks, they're doing really well, maybe three, four weeks, everything's great, and then they treat themselves because they've been doing well. Or they don't, you know, or they're not really willing to make the long-term uh, um, profound changes that need to occur. A diet only works if you're willing to change your behavior permanently. A diet's not a temporary thing, for example, right? If normally the way that you eat today makes you a 145 pound woman and you want to be 125 pounds, sure, you can do it. You can diet to get down to 125. But then as soon as you go back to your old eating ways, your old eating habits, you're gonna get back to 145. It's just a matter of time. So the reason, so the deal is that you have to keep that, you have to make the life changes. So financial things are the same. Nothing is any different. You have to, you gotta think about things a little bit differently. Uh, and you have to re no, not re-strategize, but you need to, you need to really critically think about how you look at money, how you look at your finances. So. Let me give you another example. So the first two examples were the diet and exercise. That's kind of one example, but because they're so similar and they usually go hand in hand in most people's lives. Option number two, and this is a good one, I, <clears throat> I, in my opinion, and I think this will illustrate it. Let's think about your taxes. I don't know how many of you guys, I don't know what, how, what, the range, what are the ranges of, of uh, what are, what's the range of the ages of the people that watch delicious videos here, you guys. But if you work, you pay taxes. If you own a home, you pay taxes, um, etc. So, how do taxes work? Well, let's break it down. We all know these things, but let's just go for it. The way that a tax works is at the end of the year, well, no, yeah, at the end of the year, you know, time, the next year begins, it's time to start paying your taxes, and you have until middle of April to pay them, right? Okay. So, what you do is you fill out some paperwork and then the government tells you, great, you either get this money back in a refund because you pay too much over the year or you owe us a little bit of money. Hey, 100 bucks, 80 bucks, whatever the case may be. But the way the taxes work is that you're paying throughout the year. So every paycheck you get, taxes are taken out. A portion of your income is taken out. So let's say that you get paid twice a month, okay? That means you get 24 checks in one year, paychecks. And let's say that you pay $100 state taxes plus federal taxes and all that, all that together. Let's say in total it's 100 bucks. Let's just throw a number, okay? Easy numbers. That's a total of $2,400, right? Two checks times 100, 200 times 12 months, two times 12, okay, we got it. I promise no numbers, but I guess I threw in some numbers, sorry. <laughs> Um, so we have that all taken care of. Now we got that number down. So what if it were a little bit different? What if it were a little bit different? And the, the money wasn't taken out of your check, your paycheck. So what would happen is, at the end of the year, you would get a $2,400 raise because they wouldn't be taking the, the money out. But then when tax time came, you got a letter in the mail from the government or, you know, saying, hey, guess what? You got to write us a $2,400 check and then we'll decide after that if you get any money back. Now you know that when you get money back, it doesn't come near, for example, I don't know, I think last year I got maybe 700 bucks. What did I pay in taxes? I don't remember it in total, but it was, let's, let's just throw out the number 2400. Oh, that's a third. So pay us, write us a check for a large amount of money and then we'll decide if you're lucky enough to get one third of that money back. How many people do you think would write the check? Okay. Everybody should have answered the same way. No, no way, nobody's gonna do that. So the, so the reason, so the way that government is, the government, the IRS and everything sets up taxes, and this is everywhere in the world, at least that I know, I mean, <clears throat> in my family's country of Argentina, it's the same way. You take money out every month, every, every paycheck. So then it happens, the government gets their money, you don't have to think about it, and it gets done. Because when we are honest, 
with ourselves as a society, as a government, as whatever, we know that people are not going to write a huge check once a year in the hopes that they get back one third. Okay? Or in the worst case scenario, that they're told, actually, you still owe us more money. <laughs> that $2,400 was not enough. Now you still owe us another $100. <laughs> Sorry, write us another check? I don't think so. You'd have people riding on the streets. So, that being the case, you have to think about your personal finances in the same way. So, my suggestion is this. We're going to get into this in the next one of the following videos. But whether you do a savings account, whether you, do, whether you want to invest your money, whether you want to put it in a piggy bank, whether you want to, whatever the case may be, you have to take, you have to take the role and the responsibility of the money being placed in this separate location where it's going to be saved and, and you know, um, and it's going to accumulate. You have to take that responsibility and that role out of your own hands because you won't do it. You cannot trust yourself to do it. I don't care who you are. You may, you, you may think that you can, but that's mistake number one. So, the way I did it, for example, is I decided to invest my money. Um, <clears throat> we, have, we had an investment guy. I don't sit there and do, you know, trade all the money online by myself, but we had an investment guy. and We went to him and I said, um, okay, so here's what I want to do. I said, I want to put away this much money, but what I want you to do is I want you to take the money out of my bank account the first of every month. Normally, my paychecks would come around the 14th and the 29th. So I said, you take the money out on the first of every month. And I gave him a ridiculously high number. So I said, <clears throat> okay, I don't remember. I think in my case it was mm, about... two-thirds, between a third and two-thirds of my paycheck. It kind of changed because I got raises over the years, right, obviously. Now you say, God, that's a lot of money. It is, but if you don't have it to begin with, because my bills usually were paid around the 14th, the 17th, let's say, for my credit card, things like that. So when it came time to pay my bills, the money wasn't there to begin with. In other words, <laughs> Maybe I said that backwards. Okay. I think to myself, let's say it's, uh, what month are we? We're in July. <clears throat> July 1st, my investment guy takes out my money. July 5th comes along. Oh, we got to do shopping, grocery shopping. We have to do whatever the case may be. Ex you know, things here and there. Well, how much do we have? Well, I got this much money. But I know that I also have these bills coming up. So based on that, now my calculation is a little bit different. So let's just throw out some numbers to make it a little bit easier. Let's say I had my investment guy take out uh, $500. Let's use a small, let's use a relatively easy number here. $500 at the beginning of the month. That $500 now changes the equation of how much money I have to spend on other things. Now you think, well, I don't spend my money irresponsibly or I only do the, the bare essentials. I doubt it. How many times do you Uber Eats, Postmates, DoorDash? Uh, how many times do you take an Uber to go to the movies? Um, you know, I'm, and so, and it's really difficult to assess these things. Again, about being honest, more than likely you're not going to be completely, you won't be honest with me, and that's fine, but more than likely you won't be that honest with yourself either about miscellaneous expenses that you really don't have to do, but you've gotten into a nice habit. And those things can really add up. So, going back to the going back to what I'm saying. So, five hundred dollars were taken out at the beginning of every month. So that when it came time to between, let's say, the second and the fourteenth and seventeenth around, then when I had my bills to be paid, <clears throat> I calculated. I didn't even calculate five hundred less because when I looked at my bank account, the amount that was available was five hundred dollars less. So there was no time to where I had to say, hmm, okay. Uh, let me calculate 500 less because I want to give my investment guy 500, even though that 500 is still already there. It's still there. Because if the 500 is still there, you're going to find excuses. <laughs> you're going to find justifications. And by the time 
you write your uh, your investment guy a check because you don't have him take it out automatically like I did, you're probably not gonna have 500 anymore. You may have 400, you may have 350. When, there goes one month where you invested 150 bucks less. So, being honest with yourself is the most important thing. You are not capable to the degree that you think that you are to invest the amount of money or to save the amount of money that you want. So if you go the investment route, that's one option. You can tell your investment guy, you take it out of my bank account on this day every month. Whatever amount you set, you choose. And my suggestion is also to start with the highest number that you think you can possibly, go with a really high number and see how you can, see how you can live with that. Right? And if you can't, then you know you bring it down a little bit, a hundred bucks, a hundred bucks. You give yourself a little bit more until you until you find that perfect medium. Um, and if you don't want to do that, you can do savings. Let's say you want to put it in a savings account. That's great. So then you can go to your, you can log on to your bank, uh, online banking, or you can go into your bank directly, and you can say, I want to set an automatic bank transfer. So on the first of every month, let's just keep with the same numbers. On the first of every month, I want you to move five hundred dollars from my checking account. To a savings account. Bingo. Little things like that, they'll do it for you. Those things that that's not a problem. See, little things like that are what's gonna do it. Let's say the piggy bank idea I gave earlier. Well, do you live with somebody else? Let's say you live with your brother, you live with your mom, you live with your girlfriend, whatever the case may be, your boyfriend. Okay, well then you say, hey, take out this money and put it in there for me. Take it out of my wallet. Whatever the case may be. But you need to put the responsibility in someone else's hands. Somebody who's getting paid to do it, for example, a bank or an account or, or an investment guy, neither of those two people are going to fail you because they're getting paid to do the job that if you depend on yourself to do, more than likely you won't. But these people will because it's their job. And you will learn to live with the new amount of money that you have, which will be less, whatever, however, much, you know, however much less you determine it to be. But it will work and in the long term you'll have a lot of money so that's today's video um i think everything you guys let me know i've never done something like this before but i think that i see too many people making mistakes and not thinking these things through um and i don't think there's a reason to to there's no reason to be in a situation where you know you're financially there are life obligations, and I understand that. Everybody has obligations, and everybody has certain things. Everybody's different. You have five kids, and they all, you know, eat up all of your money. Or you have a wife with whatever condition, and the medical bills are just breaking through the ceiling every day. Things like that. I understand that. And I'm not saying, but in my, from my experience, people's irresponsible spending habits are what usually are the cause of their financial issues. And if they're not, if they're not the main cause, they shouldn't be the secondary either. So, to sum up video number one, part one, be honest with yourself. Trust me when I tell you this. If you go into this thinking that you are capable and you can trust yourself enough to do what you say you want to do, you won't. Remember the examples that I gave. Think about the diet and the exercise, and also remember the taxes. And I think the taxes is the best one. So one more time, if today you fill out paperwork and you are told, if you're lucky, you get back some money. So you get a check. If not, you owe us a small amount of money. All right. In the other scenario, if things were not that way, what I'm giving the example of is you don't pay, you don't have money taken out of your paycheck. And at the end of the year, you're hit with a bill from the IRS that says, you owe us this large amount of money, and after we get that payment from you and your check clears, then we will decide if you get a portion of that money back. And we all know that if that were the way that it worked, nobody would write that check at the end of the year, the government would have no money, and well, you can continue the domino effect of that train of thought. So, write in the comments, um, 
if you have any questions, if you have any concerns, anything that I didn't explain well, uh, I'm new to this. This is not really my thing. <laughs> but these are these these thoughts are concrete in my head, explaining them in a way that uh, makes a lot of sense and flows well and is maybe a little bit more challenging. So I want you guys to let us know. Tell me what you think. Uh, and if, if there's a specific topic that you want me to address and I actually know about it and it's not something very in-depth, like I said, the difference between a money market and a CD and things like that, I'm not the guy for that. Don't ask me those things because that's not, that's not my thing. But any other type of questions, go for it. Ask and we'll see. I'll respond in the comments or we'll make another video about it. So have a good day. Remember to like, subscribe, share this channel with all your friends and family, turn on the post notification bell, write a comment. I Like I said, like it, thumbs up. Um, do the whole shebang and we'll be back with another video. We're going to do these once a week and until we're done. Take it easy guys and see you later.